Hello. Today, I want you to feel scared. I want you to feel shaken. Because fear is a very useful emotion. Because fear protects us. It protects us from danger. It protects us from harm. It helps us protect ourselves and the ones we love. Through fear, we perceive threat, we gear up our survival kits, and we look for ways to fight against the danger. Today, I want to give you hope, courage, and inspiration through fear. Now, I would like you to look at the person sitting next to you, either on your right or on your left. I would like you to guess whether they're happy with their own body. What do you think they like? What do you think they dislike? What do you think they would like to change? How much struggle do you think they experience because of this? Now, I would like you to take a moment to try to imagine how many people in this room might be unhappy or uncomfortable with their own body. Now, I would like you to raise your hands if you have at least once dieted in your lives. Thank you. That's quite a lot. Did you know that 90% of women today are dissatisfied with how they look? And did you know that 70% of women withdraw from life-engaging activities because of how they look? And did you know that diets have a 95% failure rate? And that does not mean that they have a 5% success rate, because that 5% of people who haven't failed has actually done something other than dieting. Did you know that people who frequently diet are 18 times more likely to experience depression? And that frequent and early onset dieting are linked with poorer health, both mental and physical as opposed to what's being promised. And did you know that the eating disorders are the third most common chronic illness, and that anorexia has the highest mortality rate amongst all psychiatric illnesses and other causes of death? Hang on. Weren't diets promising us health and well-being? Weren't we trying to lose weight so that we could be healthier? What's going on? With the numbers I just demonstrated, we could have categorized body dissatisfaction and illness. And with the incidence rates, we could have called it an epidemic. But we don't. We just normalize it. We just ignore it. We just try to leave it as it is. But should we? So if we're talking about bodies, let's take a closer look at how they work, shall we? Our bodies are concerned with one thing. No, it's not the number on the scale. No, it's not the amount of fat on your buttocks. It only cares about being alive. Your body's utmost concern is your survival. It works endlessly to keep you alive. It does everything it can for your well-being. It has no distractions 
It has no secret agenda. It only aims for your survival and your well-being. This is how your body is designed. This is your nature. This is what's normal. So while we're preoccupied with how we look, how much we weigh, what we should and shouldn't eat, what does the body do? Your body has two main mechanisms. One of them is hunger, and the other one is your appetite. Your hunger tells you that you need food. Your appetite tells you the kind and amount of food that you need. Because your body only cares about your survival and well-being, it has no mixed messages. It gives you internal signals to guide you and to alert you to attend to your needs. Through the link between the stomach and the brain, we perceive a signal that tells us we're hungry. And through our five sensations, we perceive what kind of food we need to feed ourselves with. This is how it goes. This is what your body does, normally and naturally. But when we are faced with images of ridiculously perfect women, when we are surrounded by bombarding information on what healthy eating is, when we are promised that once we're thin, life will be nice and smooth, when we are subliminally taught that we have to make our bodies into what's considered desirable, especially for women, when they are reminded every day that their bodies do not belong to them, but they are rather commodities, that women should be editing, shaping, making their bodies with the hope that one day they can be accepted. When all this happens, things get tough. So what do we do? <coughs> we restrict our eating. We try to control our bodies. How do we do that? By applying rules. What to eat, what not to eat, when to eat, when not to eat, how much to eat, how much to avoid. And who set these rules? billion dollar industries, the health industry, the dieting industry, the fashion and beauty industry, the sports industry, the food industry, it goes on and on. These big guys invest huge amounts of money into biased research and advertisement in order to convey these rules to you. They make sure that you're surrounded by them. They make sure that every newspaper, every column writer, every TV program, every ad campaign, every clothes shop, every supermarket, every medical professional remind you that your body cannot be trusted and that you should listen to experts to be able to do what's best for your own body. So, what happens? You're in the middle of a silent battle where your humble body sends you a few internal signals within a day and the big guys bombard you with thousands of external propaganda messages on a daily basis. It's crucial that we realize that this battle is taking place on our bodies. That our bodies have become a battlefield. A battle where we had no interest in being a part of, but we were drifted into. And we experience endless inner conflicts, 
conflicts between our psychological, physical, social needs and the external input that causes oppression. It is time that we reclaim our bodies. If today's question is, what is normal, then my answer is, natural is normal. Your body is the natural component in this equation. <coughs> Did you know that the dieting industry was a $10 billion industry in the 1980s? And that it became a $50 billion industry within a decade. And today, in 2010, it has increased to a $300 billion industry. Remember the 95% failure rate I mentioned earlier? Well, that failure rate is how they make money. Those rules that we try to apply when we're trying to be healthy, they don't come, they don't come from a source that cares about our well-being. They care about, they come from sources that care about how much money they make. So what will we do? Where do we position ourselves in this battlefield? Well, we won't take part in it. We'll try really hard to exclude ourselves from it. We'll try to reclaim our bodies, reclaim what's natural. You don't need rules to be healthy. Your body knows what's best for you, and all you have to do is listen to it. How? Here are some ideas. Eat when you're hungry. Listen to what your body is telling you to eat. Allow yourself the ability to recognize and attend to your needs. That ability already exists in you. Eat what you need and enjoy every bit of it. Eating is pleasurable. Stop eating when you're full. See the satisfaction of attending to your need. Enjoy the fulfillment. And take a moment to realize what's going on with yourself when you approach food when you aren't hungry. Are you eating because you've been depriving yourself? Are you eating because you feel anxious, bored? Deal with that. Don't cover it. Look for ways to take better care of yourself by listening to your needs. So in short, trust your needs. Trust your internal messages. No one knows what's best for you more than you do, and don't let anyone tell you the opposite. Thank you.